Hey cruisers, welcome to our first impressions video of Sun Princess. This is the third day of the cruise and I thought I would just take a little bit of time and made a few little notes here of some things I thought I'd talk about. You know, we've done as much as you can do maybe in three days. So I'm just going to tell you right up front what we uh, like about the ship so far some things that we areas of improvement we need to see but just talking about the uh, ship experience so far first let's go back to embarkation uh, embarkation was super smooth very fast we have the green lane which means uh, if you've got your medallion which you should have your medallion in advance if you're green lane you, you just basically walk right on you we walked right up and checked in. There was almost no line. There might have been 10 people. I couldn't believe it. We were stunned how few people. We boarded the ship, I think, around 2.30 in the afternoon, 2.45, something like that. It was a little later, so a lot of people had already boarded. But it was a very smooth, very easy process. No issues there. Um... We usually come to our stateroom, and the rooms were ready when we got on board. We usually come in here and we do a like a suite tour before our luggage arrives. And that was a fail because I had my camera settings all wrong. So basically I had to do my suite tour or my stateroom tour with uh, all of our stuff already unpacked. So it's a little different than the way we normally do it. Not a big deal. It kind of gives you a chance to see what it's like when you're actually living in the room. Uh, we are in a cabana mini suite. 12415 is our stateroom number. And it's kind of on that, that bubble that's on the side of the ship. I don't know what else you call that. Dome, bubble, whatever it is. Sphere. It's on the sphere. How's that? And it is not in the middle of the sphere. It's kind of more toward the front of the sphere. So it doesn't have as large a balcony as some of the other ones, but it's still a plenty large balcony. The Cabana Mini Suite, I think, is, in my opinion, it seems to be something that's designed more for families. That's just my opinion. We're an adult couple. We review everything from the perspective of an adult couple. And I don't really see the use of the cabana space for us. Maybe we'll sit out there and watch a movie. Uh, it seems like Princess missed an opportunity maybe to have a table out there where you could dine, have uh, you know in-room room service. Because there's almost no table space in this mini suite to have room service. You've got a little round coffee table in this living room that's maybe 14 inches in diameter, and then you have an equally small table, kind of a side table out in the cabana, and, and a little small round table out on the balcony as well. Um, balcony is a good size though, it's nice. The chairs on the balcony are nice. They have little foot rests. But like I say, I think this room is probably better suited for a family. And we're on a 16-night transatlantic. And even in spite of the fact that kids are in school right now, for the most part, I was surprised. I, I still, right now, have not seen a child on the cruise. And on a ship of 4,000 people, I thought for sure there'd be some families at least families with babies that aren't in school yet. But I haven't seen any kids. So it's mostly a typical princess crowd, what we remember. It's an older, mature crowd. So that was a little surprising to me. I was expecting this to be a younger demographic, maybe some 20 and 30s and 40-somethings. Now, most everybody is our age or older, I would say. The other... Just observation is the Wi-Fi is, I was expecting great things from this Starlink Wi-Fi. And so far, the first two or three days, my Wi-Fi has been pretty slow. And we have the Max. Like I said, we have the Premier package. So we have the four device, Medallion, Net, Max, whatever their highest end internet is. And the download speeds are tolerable but the upload speeds are very slow. So if I need to upload pictures to our blog, 
or like uploading this video may be impossible or it could take all day. I don't know what it's going to take. So I am not impressed. We just got off of a Silver Sea ship that had Starlink, and it was the fastest internet we've seen on a cruise so far. Very, very usable. A little disappointed in the Wi-Fi. Um, this is a, today is a cool day outside. Not many people out on the outer decks. It's a day at sea. So most everybody is inside the ship. And when everybody's inside the ship, it feels pretty crowded. All of the venues feel pretty crowded today. Uh, we did go to a show today, a matinee. It was nice, good show. We'll talk more about entertainment in our final review. It does feel, it does feel understaffed. In, especially in the restaurants. The first night we ate in the main dining. Oh, that's another thing. When we got on board, we went after we did our mustard drill, we went to the wheelhouse bar to have a glass of Prosecco to kind of toast the new cruise. And I start thumbing through the app to check our dining reservations because I forgot what time we had a dinner reservation. I knew we had pre-booked reservations at every specialty restaurant on the ship. And on embarkation day, we were supposed to have dinner at the Catch by Rudy. Well, when I looked at the app, it said we were having dinner in the Crown Grill. And I said, no, that's not right. And as I start looking through the app, it showed that we were in the Crown Grill three times. And I know I didn't do that. I booked Crown Grill one night, every specialty dining one night. So I call the dining support number, whatever it is. Come to find out, the catch by Rudy was closed that night of embarkation night, and they had just arbitrarily replaced it with a Crown Grill reservation. Also, the butcher block by Dario, which is one of the things I was really looking forward to on this cruise, is closed for the entire cruise, all 16 days. They're in the process of moving these restaurants around to different locations. And that was a, a not a great way to start the cruise because I was really disappointed that I wouldn't get a, get a chance to try the butcher block because we come on these cruises not just to enjoy the cruise but to also tell you about the experience. And now there's a venue uh, that we can't tell you about. I can't. I don't get to experience it, and I don't get to tell you about my experience. So that was disappointing. And, they, and there was no advance notice of this. We didn't know this until the day, until we were on the ship. I checked the app every day leading up to this cruise, and it never said anything about these reservations changing. They just changed once we got on board the ship. That was a little bit disappointing. For those of you that follow the channel, I did go to guest services. I think I had mentioned in a previous video that I had prepaid for two different specialty dining restaurants that we now are supposed to get complimentary because we upgraded our premier package to the unlimited specialty dining. I went to guest services, talked to this very nice lady who helped me. She got it resolved, put it on shipboard credit, and my understanding is at the end of the cruise, if you don't use that shipboard credit, they will refund it to your credit card. We will probably end up using it because we did get reservations to the chef's table, which up until we got our reservations to the chef's table, I thought was gonna be $99 per person. But no, it's $149 per person. And I'm not sure there's any meal worth $149 per person. And I consider myself to kind of be a foodie, but $149 a person seems a little steep. We, they did rebook us into Rudy's the second night, which was last night. We had dinner there last night. Rudy's has a cover charge of $45 per person. And in my opinion, it was good, but it wasn't worth $45 per person. It was not as good as the Rudy's Seafood Restaurant that we ate at on Carnival on the Mardi Gras. I thought the food on that restaurant or at that restaurant was much better than what we had last night. I had the fried calamari and it was very rubbery, had a very rubbery texture. 
the batter or the uh, breading that they fried on it, uh, fried it in was very good. But the calamari itself is a little too thick and a little too rubbery. Uh, the shrimp cocktail was good. I had the steak and lobster. It was good, but it was nothing remarkable. Uh, Ricky had the Bronzino, and hers was a little dry. Now, what was good, stand out, was the desserts. The desserts were really good, especially her dessert. She had like a strawberry pavlova, and it was excellent. One of the best desserts we've ever had on a ship, I think. Really good. Service was good, but the atmosphere, I know they're moving. I think they're going to be moving Rudy's to a new location. Right now, the one we ate in was at the back of the buffet. It's actually used as part of the buffet, the eatery, they call it, during the day. And at night, it becomes Rudy's Catch by Rudy's. And very, very bland atmosphere. I mean, it just looks like you're eating at a buffet table with a tablecloth. So they do need to move that venue to its own space with much better decor because it, 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 was, it was really, I don't know, just kind of... If you've ever been on a Holland America ship and you've eaten at Cannelloni, they do that on Cannelloni. It's basically a section of the buffet, or in their case, the marketplace. But they've done a much better job of the decor. They, they actually segregate it by making it look different. The, the chairs are different. The tablecloths are different. Every, the lighting is different. So you feel a little more like you're in a specialty restaurant. Last night, it felt like we were just eating in a section of the eatery. So, and I think the butcher block by Dario is the same way. It's just on the opposite side of the eatery, on the up opposite side of the ship. So apparently those two restaurants are getting new locations, which they need to do, in my opinion. So I think that's going to be a good thing. I think the food could be better, honestly. Service was great. Service has so far has been good. The first night we ate in main dining. Service was slow. Uh, again, they felt a little understaffed. But service was good. It was just slow. So that's my first impression for now. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. If there's anything else you want us to check on while we're on board, we'll be glad to do it. Hopefully I can get this video to upload with the Wi-Fi the way it is. And uh, that's it for now. Thanks for joining me. Until the next time, smooth sailing.